Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 2nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. If you have a Dell computer, make sure that the support assist software that's delivered by default on most Dell computers has either been disabled or updated. Dell patched a critical vulnerability in this software that could lead to remote code execution. The problem here is the ever so ubiquitous cross-site request forging problem. The Dell Support Assist does run a REST API that's only accessible via localhost, so you would think, well, not easily accessible for a remote attacker, but your browser can easily be tricked into sending a request to this API since the API does not verify the origin of the request. The API is all powerful, allows you to download and execute software. It's intended uh, for, well, as the name implies, support purposes and also to allow you to install updates and the like. And that's really what this API is supposed to accomplish. But due to the missing origin check, anybody whose website you visit is able to send requests to the API triggering these updates and downloads. Bill Demarcarpi found this vulnerability originally October 26th last year, reported it to Dell. Dell released an update for this vulnerability about two weeks ago. And on Monday, Bill published a blog post with details about this vulnerability, including proof of concept exploits. And then we got uh, 14 vulnerabilities in the AM100 and AM101 Crestron Air Media Presentation Gateway. These are devices that allow you to present wirelessly from a laptop or a mobile device. And sadly, many of these 14 vulnerabilities do allow remote code execution. To make things even more interesting, Crestron announced that for some of these vulnerabilities, you may receive a patch end of the month. For others, you do have to wait until July. I've seen these devices in multiple hotels, also at universities. Now, the product itself has been discontinued, but was on sale as recently as late last year. So until a patch arrives for these products, uh, not really much uh, you can do. Not sure what replacement products Creston has to offer. Maybe a little bit of sales pitch here in order to get you to upgrade. But in general, if you would buy any devices like this, it's always good to check with the vendor how long these devices will be supported for after they are no longer being offered for sale. And JavaScript code being used to skim credit card numbers from payment pages is further evolving. Sanguine Security it discovered the latest version and it has support for 57 different payment gateways. It also makes it a little bit more difficult to spot it. It tries to sort of emulate the jQuery in that it uses the same file name. The domain it's being loaded from is jQueries.com. So really just a slight different spelling of jQuery and the once you download the code, it actually includes variable names and the like that uh, indicate that it may actually be Google Analytics. So at least if someone is looking at the suspicious page and is seeing code like this, uh, they're very likely going to skip over it, considering this code harmless. So it really remains very important that you know from which sites you are including code. So in case your site does get compromised and additional code is being added, you're able to spot this additional code quickly. And a group of researchers in Germany found yet another set of attacks against the popular OpenPGP and SMIME digital signatures in emails. Of course, last year we had some uh, 
big attacks against these standards. This sort of continues this work. Now, the attacks themselves are really too many, and so to mention them all here in this podcast, but in general, they usually involve either partially signed messages that are not correctly identified or, for example, MIME messages uh, where the MIME headers and so are not correctly interpreted. Also, email messages like HTML email messages that are loading additional code, like, for example, cascading style sheets or scripts from external websites. In general, it's always a bad idea to load external content into an email because this external content can change at any time. And we had some very simple attacks in the past here, where, for example, a cascading style sheet could be swapped out to make the email say something completely different. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.